Fujifilm X-T5 versus Sony A7C. Which camera is better for a passionate photographer or for a professional photographer? Let's talk about these two cameras and see which one will do a better job for my long time experience in using both of these two cameras. Let's talk about this now. Hi there and welcome to my channel. My name is Tudor Matescu. I have XT5 for almost any year and Sony A7C for almost any year. So I was able to use both of these two cameras side by side in studio for event photography, for street photography, for family photography, for product photography and so on. So in all kinds of scenarios, photography and videography. So let's compare these two cameras side by side. But before, please subscribe now, now, now to my channel and give it a like. So regarding ergonomics, I feel that Fujifilm X-T5 has the best, the best ergonomics compared to Sony A7C. So the ergonomics of X-T5 is great. I have enough buttons, enough dials, enough customization control and so on. Here on X-T5 I have a normal tilt screen that also is flipping in the vertical mode and on Sony A7C I have a flip screen that I can use for vertical shots like this, but I can also use it closed. So regarding the screens, for photography I'm liking more the X-T5 experience, but for video the screen of Sony A7C it is better. So it's really depending on your priority. Regarding EVF, yes the X-T5 EVF it's a little better, I feel it a little good, but the EVF of Sony A7C it's not bothering me, even if it is under XT5. So overall, yes, XT5 has better ergonomics, but this better ergonomics comes with a penalty of size and weight. And this could be a huge problem regarding of the camera that you want to choose, because this is bigger, heavier, and it's not a camera that you can carry it with you all day long. We'll see it at the passionate photographer chapter where we will analyze lenses and options between these two cameras. But for the moment, bigger, heavier, with better ergonomics, lighter, easier on the hand, with good enough ergonomics. What I'm missing here is just the second FN button. So this is what I feel I am missing here, but it's doable if you buy a lens with a second FN button. So regarding buying decision, I see no problems between these two cameras regarding ergonomics. The next chapter is AF speed. I feel that both of these two cameras have great AF and very accurate AF. But XT5, even with the latest firmware update, it's a little behind Sony A7C. It's good, it's great, it's doing a way, way better job than uh, the old Fujifilm cameras, but it's under Sony A7C. I feel that the AF of XT5, it's like uh, Sony A7R3. I'm comparing XT5 with that camera because I had that camera and I know how the AF of Sony A7R3 work. But Sony A7C has a better AF and a more accurate AF with Sony lenses but also with third party lenses. So here Sony is winning, not by much, I would say 10-20% depending on lighting conditions, depending on lenses and so on. On X-T5, the AF also depends on lenses and also on Fujifilm lenses. So overall, yes, Sony A7C better AF, no questions asked here, but this is a great AF machine also. Now regarding build quality, I don't know, in the hand X-T5, I'm liking some elements and other elements I don't like. We have here plastic buttons, these uh, dials are uh, made from plastic and, and they are very cheap, uh, I don't know, I really don't like the dials that are on the top, they are very light, it's cheap plastic, it's not like on X-Pro3. The bottom is feeling nice, sturdy and powerful. The camera is feeling sturdy, but uh, there are many complaints regarding build quality of Fujifilm cameras. Personally, I didn't have any problem, but uh, yes, I have wished the dials to be of better materials, of aluminum material, 
and so on. So it's feeling in the hand better build, but I could not say yes, it is better build. You can drop it and you'll have no problems. On the other side, Sony, I don't know, we have here some plastic, but the plastic is justified because we are winning size and weight. On XT5, it's not justified from my point of view, but uh, overall, I don't know, in the hand, how they are feeling, it's the same. So the same plastic, the buttons from uh, Sony A7C, yes, they are feeling the same, the same uh, wheels. So yes, regarding build quality, I can call them equally good. Now, another important fact that we must address is battery life. Because yes, we have here a bigger battery and also have here a very good battery. Sony A7C also has the best battery between these two cameras. It's lasting more, it's more powerful, it's taking a long time to discharge. This is a better battery compared to other Fujifilm batteries, but it's under Sony A7C. So great batteries, you'll not have any problems, but the battery from your Sony will last more. Now let's talk about image quality. In image quality chapter, I want to address color, sharpness, and image rendition resolution. I have here a 40 megapixel sensor and here a 24 megapixel sensor. So here I have more resolution, but I will get better sharpness just with Fujifilm new lenses. The 33 mm f1.4, the 80 mm f1.4 and so on. I don't feel with older lenses that I get better resolution. You feel uh, that problem, but also it could be a problem of the extra sensor that I'm translating it using Lightroom. If I would do use Capture One, I would have better rendition, but also with Sony A7C, I would have better rendition. Sony A7C, great image quality, better image quality in RAW files and in black and white files. But the big differentiate factor here, it is white balance and color. Yes, XT5 is winning regarding color and we can include color in image quality. So if you like color and if you don't shoot black and white, XT5 will render great JPEGs, great RAW files and great white balance in the RAW files without polluted colors, also in Capture One and also in Lightroom. With Sony A7C and any Sony camera, I recommend use Capture One. You can use Lightroom, you will get better colors than Sony A7 III, R3 and so on. But Capture One, it's great and will get beautiful white balance and no pollution in colors when you use Capture One for your Sony camera. So it really depends on what you want, but this will offer you overall in the RAW file better image quality and you can control the color great with Capture One and Cobalt profiles if you want Fujifilm colors. But if you want straight of the camera JPEGs, very good and ready to use, then X-T5 has the biggest advantage here. No comparison here. Now let's compare X-T5 versus Sony A7C from the point of view of a passionate photographer. You'll buy this camera for your passion. You'll buy this camera for hobby activities, for doing photography as a way to relax. Well, which camera is better? It's a hard decision. It really depends on what you want. You want size, weight, color, black and white. What you want? It really depends on what you want. So if you want black and white files, if you want a lighter camera with great AF and no hassle, then Sony A7C is the camera for you. So if you are loving black and white, the full frame camera is the best tool to get one of the most beautiful black and white files, no questions asked. You'll have deeper tones, you'll have better dynamic range, and so on. And the light that will be rendered from a full frame camera will be different compared to the light rendered from an APS-C body. But if you like the film look, the film photography, the across look, film simulation, the colored profiles of a Fujifilm camera, and so on, then Fujifilm X-T5 is for you. The questions that is rising here, which camera 
it is more fun to use. From my point of view, the camera that it's more fun to use between these two cameras, it's X-T5. By the way, if you are passionate about photography, I have a newsletter dedicated to teaching and sharing my passion for photography, where you will receive a free POV, a strong POV, where I will show you how I am able to get pictures after pictures at a very difficult event. You will see my settings and my way of action, and also you will receive lots of tips, my recommended books for photography, and many more practical tips for the hobbyist photographer. So please check this link or the link in the comments and description and subscribe to my newsletter dedicated for someone who is passionate about photography. So if you don't know which camera to choose, as a passionate photographer, I would choose X-T5. Also, X-T5 has a more silent shutter than Sony 7C and if you want to do street photography, this camera is as silent as a leaf shutter. So great for street photography, you can't do this with Sony A7C. Also, you have a very fast shutter speed and you can use an f1.2 lens in bright days. You have smaller lenses, but again, you lose at image quality with smaller lenses, but you'll gain at portability even if the camera is a little bigger. But if you are asking which camera to buy for passion photography as a hobby, I would recommend X-T5 because this is the camera from one year that I'm taking and putting my hand on it even if I can take Sony A7C. Why? Because again, it's more fun to use. I get better JPEGs, I get good family pictures and so on. Even if I would have wanted to use the full frame, I don't use it because this is more fun to use. Now for the working photographer, which camera to use? Well, it really depends on what's your main purpose. Do you do videography? Do you do photography? Do you do portraits? Do you do documentary photography? What kind of pro work you are doing? X-T5, it's giving you a great image quality in videography. And this is why I want to bring this discussion up because the specs regarding videography on this camera are great. You have extraordinary image quality, extraordinary colors, direct colors in your footage. So great image quality, very, very good image quality. Straight off the camera JPEG, so you don't have to edit the JPEGs if you are this kind of shooter. And this could be a good start for someone who is just starting to earn money from photography. You don't want to waste time in editing, in post-processing, in Lightroom or in Capture One. Then you can use the X-T5 built-in JPEG engine. You can really do this. You can really do it. So it's really up to you. But if you want to process files and if you want to have that depth of field for portraits, then Sony A7C, it will do a better job. Also, Sony A7C will help you with better AF and with smaller lenses. But on X-T5, you will need to buy bigger lenses to get that great AF and that great image quality. So overall, I feel that with X-T5, you will spend more on the lenses, you have a bigger package, but you will be able to get straight from the camera, good JPEG and very, very good video. On Sony A7C, you will spend less. You can buy Samyang lenses that are great lenses. You can find all kinds of Sony lenses with better AF, with better RAW files that you can post-process and with good video image quality because I can't say the image quality of the video that you'll get from Sony A7C is not good. It's good. For vlogging in studio, I do prefer Sony A7C. The AF is more reliable in video than the X-T5 AF. With X-T5, I'm really scared when I'm using the AF in video. So it's really up to you uh, how you will use both two cameras. But to make it simple, if you are just starting out and if you don't want to learn photography editing and videography editing and you just want to deliver, then X-T5 is the camera for you. But if you want to learn to edit files, to edit video files, to edit photography files, then Sony A7C is the camera for you. Yes, you will work more with this camera, but you will get 
reliable results and better image quality on the long term. If you know what you are doing, if you don't know what you are doing and if you are using Lightroom and if you don't use the right profiles, you'll have a headache using this camera. So you really need to think well what's your strategy here. Now, do you want to take your passion for photography at the next level? Are you a working photographer? Do you know what it's a photography funnel? Do you have a newsletter dedicated for your clients? If not, check my newsletter and find out more techniques to get more customers and get more money for your photography business. Link in the comments and description and also on the screen a short URL. Overall, indifferently of your choosing, both of these two cameras will do a great job. So you can't go wrong with either of these two cameras, but I do feel that XT5 will make you spend more money than a Sony A7C camera with lenses. Now, in conclusion, both of these two cameras are great. To get the best image quality on X-T5, you need to buy the biggest and more expensive lenses. So this is a problem. On Sony A7C, you can get rid very easily with small lenses from Samyang, from uh, Viltrox, from Sony, from Tamron, and you'll get amazing image quality. But with Fujifilm X-T5, you can't do this. With Fujifilm X-T5, you will be limited to very few lenses that will deliver great image quality in a small package. And if you are interested about those lenses, please subscribe to my channel to see my reviews about those great lenses that are delivering great results on X-T5. So overall, the most important factor that you must decide is how I want to use the camera. If I want to use it for family photography, for street photography, for fun, X-T5 is the most fun camera compared to Sony A7C. Of course, there are other options, smaller options, but we are talking just about these two cameras. But if you want to use a camera for work, also for fun, for street photography, for black and white photography, for vlogging, then Sony A7C is the camera to go. It's a multi-tool. Yes, it's not as fun as X-T5, but it will do a great, great job. Now, please subscribe to my channel. Give it a like to this video. Also, check my affiliate links if you want to buy something from the gear that I'm using. Also, check my newsletter. Links in comments and description. And after that, go to this next video right now. Click, click, click here now.